On November 9, 1967, the first test flight of the Saturn V took place. It was called Apollo 4, and the uh, booster lifted off exactly on schedule in the early morning hours. Um, the five engines of the first stage performed absolutely perfectly. They delivered a total of seven and a half million pounds of thrust, and as you might imagine, that created an enormous uh, shock wave and roar that uh, amazed everybody who witnessed the launch and uh, even uh, startled Walter Cronkite in the press trailer. It was shaking the, uh, their, their little press building so, so badly that uh, he was holding the uh, plate glass with his hands to keep it from shattering. Um, the rocket uh, ascended into a clear blue sky the first stage uh, burned for two and a half minutes. Just as planned, it fell away. The five engines of the second stage lit up and burned for six minutes. And then the, the second stage uh, was cast off. And the third stage engine burned for another couple of minutes and placed Apollo 4 in orbit. Of course, uh, the uh, needle-like projection that you see on the left at the very top of the rocket is the launch escape rocket, a solid fuel rocket that separates um, shortly after the ignition of the second stage. Um, and on the right you see a very nice uh, picture of the Saturn V um, climbing towards orbit with uh, just a monstrous uh, trail of flame from those five first stage engines which were burning a mixture of uh, a combination of kerosene and uh, liquid oxygen, very f pure form of kerosene called RP1 and liquid oxygen. So the, uh, the booster performed absolutely perfectly. Um, the uh, Apollo 4 spacecraft was placed in an orbit around 115 miles above the Earth. And then the third stage engine, which is called the S-4B, ignited again to raise the high point of that orbit up to about 17,000 kilometers, or otherwise or about 10,500 miles about above the Earth, and um, then separated, and the big engine on Apollo 4's service module fired at that point to raise the high point to uh, about 11,000 miles. And on the way up, uh, this an automatic camera in the spacecraft photographed the Earth, and you see there on the right the uh, crescent Earth viewed from an apogee of uh, as uh, as Apollo 4 climbed toward an apogee of 11,000 miles. On the left, you see the um, overall flight plan. The uh, purpose of going up to that great height was uh, to uh, experience the radiation environment and the temperature environment of space for a prolonged period and also the big engine on the service module, the service propulsion engine or SPS, was fired to speed the spacecraft toward the Earth on the way back down and have it re-enter the Earth's atmosphere at speeds approaching a lunar re-entry of 25,000 miles per hour. In other words, to test the heat shield on the command module and make sure that it could handle a lunar re-entry. Um, that mission was a total success and again in November of 1967 two more unmanned test flights followed. At left you see the uh, Saturn 1B for Apollo 5, lifting off in January of 1968, it carries as its payload only a lunar module, the first lunar module, uh, which was tested unmanned. And that launch went very well, and the only problems that they had on that flight was that the uh, computer software that was supposed to control the firing of the LEMS ascent and descent engines was not quite up to snuff and uh, flight controllers had to step in and control the engines manually uh, but they did manage to test both the descent engine and the ascent engine of the lunar module 
and so that mission was considered a success. On the right, you see the um, separation of the uh, ring separating the first and second stages of Apollo 6, <clears throat> the second uh, unmanned test flight of the uh, Saturn V booster. And an automatic camera took that picture uh, on that test flight, which was in April of 1968. Now, on that flight, they had some problems. On the first stage, those big engines that were burning uh, all told 7.5 million pounds of thrust experienced some vibrations, some problems in the way the fuel and oxidizer were flowing through the engines, and they created a condition that's called POGO, which refers to a, um, a vibration uh, sort of along the length of the rocket. So imagine the motion of a POGO stick, and that's exactly what's happening to the rocket. So it was, uh, if you'd been riding in the command module, you would have experienced uh, for, forward and backward oscillations uh, of around 10 Gs, 10 times your body weight. Not very pleasant at all. In fact, so bad that uh, the uh, astronauts would probably have had to abort the mission, although they wouldn't have been able to handle the controls while that was going on. It lasted about 10 seconds. The um, first stage separated, and at that point, the second stage lit, and it was fine for about four minutes, and then two of its five engines stopped working. Um, and this was startling to the, to the controllers in uh, mission control. They managed to use the remaining three engines to get Apollo uh, 6 into the proper orbit. Uh, but then, when the third stage uh, engine was supposed to reignite to send Apollo 6 onto a higher uh, orbital uh, apogee, or high point, just like Apollo 4 had done, the engine didn't work. And so this was a very distressing mission for the, uh, for the managers at, at NASA. They, they spent um, uh, hundreds of people for, for a few months, worked on these problems, and they figured out how to solve them. And uh, the amazing thing is that the very next flight of the Saturn V was going to carry people. Now, you might think that they would decide to try one more test flight without people, but no, they felt that they had solved the problems well enough that they could move ahead. Now, at this point, in the summer of 1968, uh, things were not going all that well for those upcoming manned flights. In particular, the lunar module that was supposed to be used on the first manned test flight of the lunar module was way behind schedule. And, you know, NASA had a very carefully planned sequence of missions, and this was going to screw up that entire sequence. Um, and on top of that, there was evidence from CIA uh, spy satellite info and intelligence that they had that indicated that the Soviets were actually planning to send cosmonauts around the moon. Not to orbit the moon, but to just go around it in a kind of figure eight. Well, with these two pieces of information in mind, George Lowe, who was the manager of the Apollo spacecraft program office at the Space Center in Houston, came up with an amazing and bold plan. He proposed that assuming the first manned flight of the Apollo Command Service Modules, which was called Apollo 7 and was scheduled for the fall. If that was successful, then the astronauts for Apollo 8 should be the first to ride the Saturn V, and they should go around the moon. And so with that incredible plan, um, George Lowe managed to convince his colleagues, uh, and uh, as we'll see, uh, Apollo 7 uh, took off in October of 1968, and so the outcome of Apollo 7 would determine whether Apollo 8 would actually go around the moon.